cap broke. Hello everyone, Fanta here, you're watching Fantavision, and today I'm discussing GameStop a little bit differently than normal. Now it's been a long time since I've discussed GameStop like this, in fact it was my one of my first episodes of Tales from Retail, really not called Tales from Retail. I believe it was called GameStop Sucks, which was just right on the nose, but uh, instead I want to talk about the customer's perspective, what it was like as a person who shopped at GameStop and what it's like now as well, now that I've worked there. I can kind of compare and contrast my thought processes of before, after, during, because I did still occasionally shop at GameStop when I worked there. So there's there's quite a few frame of mind, you know, frames of mind that I've had about this company. Real quick gonna dive into what I'm drinking because this is Tales from Retail right there catch fire cinnamon whiskey pretty delicious two shots of that mixed with Martinelli's I don't is there any other sparkling sparkling cider I don't think I've ever seen it it's always Martinelli's they've got like a monopoly on the sparkling cider industry I only get apple though I'm not a big fan of the other fruits so I mix those two together and it tastes like either apple pie or like those cinnamon apples you eat while either having some Christmas dinner or Boston Market or Thanksgiving. So, I don't know. I like it a lot. It's a refreshing drink. It, you can't really taste the alcohol in it at all if you put in the right amount. Unfortunately... This was already unsealed. I tried to seal it again with the plastic. It didn't seal correctly. So it's not as carbonated as it should be, unfortunately. But it's okay. But I'm going to set it down because I remember how many times it was clinking during the last time I had a drink. So I will be talking about the GameStop holidays probably later on this year, closer to you know, all the other holidays, I know Thanksgiving just happened, or it's about to happen, it's about to happen, I'm trying to figure out when this video is going up, Thanksgiving is, I believe, two or three days away, so that's pretty exciting, I'm, again, thankful for all of you guys sticking around, watching this series, hope you've been enjoying it, I'm gonna shut up now, and let's dive in, so, when I worked at GameStop, I almost completely forgot what it was like being the customer again after a while and it's it's taken it, it took a couple years to kind of get back into that mindset and to think about what it was like in the customer's shoes because when you're working there the little things that customers do really piss you off and you don't get why they do it but then you find yourself doing those exact things and I know a lot of you will consider that hypocrisy but Honestly, it was more of them not, or me, not giving enough chances to the people that were coming in. And I understand that now that I'm a customer again, but anyway, let me dive in what I mean. Like, for example, our card reader, when they first were introducing those stupid chip things where you stick your card in, our card readers could not deal with the chip for a while. And then when it could, they wouldn't do it. So we would have people trying to use the chip thing. Sir, it doesn't work yet. Oh, okay. And then they finally swipe it. But we'll have a sign on it that says, chip does not work. And they'll try to use it anyway. And you think to yourself, how stupid is this person that they're, they're putting the chip in when it clearly says, do not put the chip in. And now that I've done that a couple times, I understand I mean those people are probably just not even thinking about it they're just they're just doing it like this is the motion that they know now they're used to this just like when they'd slide when they need the chip they're so used to sliding for all those years that this is a new thing that they have to do now that's ingrained in themselves they're so used to doing one thing and they do it without even thinking about it but as a person that's working in retail 
these kind of things like get under your skin a little bit because you have people doing this to you all day long. And the thing is, is the, the customer will sometimes get aggravated and take it out on you and that they deserve to be called idiots for because come on, really? I mean, just, it's not that big of a deal. But I mean, I'll occasionally like swipe my card when I need to use the chip or I'll use the chip when it clearly says it's not working. And like, I get that. I don't take it out on the person. I go, oh, but I notice that sometimes the people working behind the counter, they have a slight tone to their voice, a slight condescending tone because they're judging me over my little fuck up because I didn't read the little thing. Because nobody looks at the chip reader when they're going to put the card in. You just do it, you know, instinctively. And then you look down and you're like, oh, it's not working because of the sign. I don't know. That's just one example. Another example is, I don't know, just like the whole age check thing when you're buying a rated M game. I know later on in my years when I started working, when I was working at GameStop, I could kind of tell what age they were. I wouldn't age check certain people, but I would also age check more people than I needed to. And I know, especially probably my first two years of working there, maybe a little bit, probably about two years, I would just check everybody because I didn't want to get in trouble. And we're always told about secret shoppers and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is now, now that I'm a customer again, and before that, I was actually, I was like too young, I think. So it made sense that I got age checked all the time. So it wasn't a big deal when I worked there. But now that I'm older and I don't work there anymore, and it's been years since I've worked there, it's so frustrating to have to dig out my ID and have them list off the things in the back of the game that are bad. Now, the thing is, there's two, there's, there's two things with that. Now, I'm fine with the age check, it's frustrating, it's annoying. I don't like it. I really don't. I mean, I can I can drink. I don't I don't care if there's blood in my video game. But especially yeah, I don't care if there's blood in my video game. If I picked out my game, it means I have done research on it, I've been excited for it, I know what's in the game. I am not someone's parent. I am not buying it for a little kid. I'm buying it for me. So when they sit there and they read the laundry list of things that are in the game, I, I couldn't give less of a shit. Just give me my game. You've already made me dig out my ID from my wallet. Stop reading it. Now, this is something I didn't even do when I was working there, unless it was like my first couple of weeks, maybe. And I know for a fact the GameStop near me has been there for years. So why the fuck... Are you reading me off everything in the back? It's for me. I'm not in with a kid. What? Why do I care if these things are in the game? It makes no sense to me. My friends will not even go to that GameStop anymore because of that. Because it's just so stupid. Are you sure you want this game? Because it's got blood and gore and violence and sexual themes. And I'm like, yes, I know. It has all of these wonderful things in it. Thank you for reminding me. I just don't understand the logic of some people that work there now. Like, and maybe if I was still working there, something would have come down from corporate. No, but I, at the same time, this is the only GameStop that does it. I don't have any other GameStop, even at GameStop, so the people don't know me. They still don't do that. A K I, no, actually, I think it's the only one that IDs me, too. So... <laughs> Basically, just don't go to that GameStop anymore. And that's an experience I'm having as a customer. It's just so weird being on the other side. Again, I mean, I guess it's not really weird. It's been years, but it's just interesting thinking about how would I react if I still worked there? Because I had a different mindset when I worked there and shopped there. You almost feel when you work there like a sense of entitlement and I know I hate that word because most people use it wrong but we're gonna use it correctly in this video you feel entitled to be treating be treated higher than the customer because you work for the same organization as them you expect them to not screw you over because you're both part of the thing you both know what's going on 
you're not going to pitch me the gameplay guarantee if I work for GameStop, because I know, I work there. And if I'm not we wearing a GameStop shirt that lets them know, hey, I'm part of the Brotherhood, and they start reading off, I'm like, I know, no, I work at GameStop. They go, oh, most of the time, they go, oh, yeah, okay. And they kind of wink at you like, yeah, gameplay guarantees fucking stupid. Oh, pre-orders are stupid. Oh, you can't pre-order at my store. Get out. Um, which was another thing, actually. When you work for GameStop, I don't know if this is a rule anymore, but when I worked there, you could only pre-order at your own store. You could not have a game pre-order anywhere else. So even if the GameStop that you work at is like 50 miles away, and the, your GameStop that's closest to you is just a couple miles, you have to pre-order it at your store. I mean, most that's not a big deal. It was just kind of a fun fact for you guys, but you had to only pre-order at your store. So, that was also kind of frustrating at the same time, because if it was like a limited edition thing... No, I think we were still fine. But limited edition things, you kind of get like the opposite of entitlement. You kind of get screwed, depending on your manager. If you've got a manager that's really cool and he's down to earth and he understands he'll try to make sure that you get the item that you want and I know a lot of people are gonna be pissed off by that and as a customer now it's kind of frustrating knowing that yeah the employees are gonna get first dibs if their if their manager doesn't hate them and they'll disobey, disobey corporate a little bit they'll allow the customer to get that or the employee to get that limited item like the NES classic Super Nintendo classic the future N64 classic I guarantee that at least 55 60 percent of GameStops out there are gonna allow their employees to buy up one of those systems right there and then and I don't blame them I understand it it's frustrating from our perspective because we do not work for them we are the ones that are getting screwed over because of them getting first dibs but I do have an understanding of that and I'm like okay with it you know if they're buying a bunch of them that's bullshit if they're scalping them and they work there that's not okay we never allowed that I don't think any GameStop have ever even subbed at allowed that kind of behavior but I understand if they do get first dibs on some of the limited edition stuff what was also interesting as a customer for, um, while I was working at GameStop and is the only reason why I ever bought stuff at GameStop was when I worked there was because I could Frankenstein together a perfect copy of a game. I could have somebody who wants to trade something in but they called up first and went, hey, I have these games I want to trade in but they're sealed. Um, do I have to do I have to open them before I trade them in? And of course we'd say yes because of liability reasons for it being stolen. I don't know. And I know that these games have just been opened, so they're brand new pretty much. And they'll come in, maybe I want that game, I'll buy it, I'll get my employee discount, and there you go. Just saved money. Or what was even cooler was somebody traded in like a steelbook version of the game. I would buy up so many of the different steelbooks because they were just so cool and usually the game was really, really old, so it wasn't even worth anything. So you could just buy it for super cheap and just add it to your collection. Like I've got like one of the Splinter Cell games, Steelbook, Modern Warfare 3, God of War. I mean I've got a couple yeah. I've got quite a few steelbooks over there. And it's just I don't know. I mean it doesn't really add too much value to the game, but it looks cool in my collection. That was the reason I wanted it. And that was back when I did a lot of game collecting. I don't really do that anymore. I don't really have the space or the time to go game hunting. I don't have the time to play them anymore. But it is nice now just having them in my collection. And that was definitely the only way I would buy a used game. I would always look for the best case, the best manual when manuals existed, and the best disc. And I would just put them all together into this perfect package. And then I'd buy it. And that was a huge plus to working at GameStop. You also got first pickings of all the stuff that gets traded in. So, like I said, if brand new stuff got traded in, you could buy it at a cheaper price. You could get limited editions of consoles. 
You could do all sorts of stuff like that. Like limited edition controllers. I've got a couple 360 controllers. Like I got the Halo 4 controller. Now normally I would not touch a used controller at all because after working there, I know they're the most disgusting things on the planet. I mean, think about what you do with your hands and what other people do with their hands. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So after they do that and they don't wash their hands, they touch that controller and then trade it in. So what I would do is I would take a razor blade, even grosser than you imagine, because there's all these like cracks in the controller, all these lines where they put the plastic together and like dead skin and gunk and all this gross stuff gets in that controller and I take a razor blade and I just kind of carve it all out, take hand sanitizer and other like forms of alcohol, clean off that entire controller, get in the grooves, get in the battery, get all the triggers, get all the buttons until it's sparkling brand new. And then I get my employee discount and get it for cheaper. And I got that cool controller. Now, we did not do that with every controller because A, we didn't have time. B, we frankly just did not care. I mean, if you're buying a used controller, you kind of assume that the person buying it is going to clean it themselves because that's gross. Just saying. I, I would never buy a used headset, ever. That's the most disgusting thing I can think of. I mean, it's sitting on their head and their greasy hair and their ears and they've got like their wax and like dead skin. That's gross. Like we saw some of the grossest headsets come in. There are often times I just told them we do not take these in. I just did not want that in our inventory and I knew it wouldn't sell. And we also did have people that buy it, would buy that kind of stuff. I mean, it's kind of crazy that people did, but you know, there's a market for everything, I guess. Even a used like Xbox 360 basic headset I'm like, remember those cheap plastic things? Just, ah, ugh. Some of those came in and they were like yellow for some reason. Like that, that padding was like a greenish yellow. I don't know how that happens, but that's horrifying to me. And as a person that worked there, I mean, even before that, I would never buy anything like that. But after having worked there, I definitely wouldn't even think about it. And I tell everyone not to do it. Do not buy a used headset. That's just the grossest thing on the planet. Before working there, I used GameStop as kind of a, a t time killer slash hangout place. I know that's weird because I complain about GameStop all the time as it's like the worst place ever. It used to not be. And like I said, the location that I worked at was the one I spent a lot of time in. Because my buddies would work at, game, or at Walmart or it was just like a place in between other people's houses, we'd meet at Walmart or we'd be waiting for a movie. It just it was a great place to kill time because the GameStop I worked at, which is the one I hung out at, they turned the volume a little bit lower on the TVs so it wasn't blasting in your ears. They had all the game demo units working. They, it was a cleaner store. It was more open, less cluttered, especially back then. If you go into a GameStop now, it looks like somebody's closet who doesn't actually want to clean their room. They just kind of take everything off the floor and shove it in. It's it's a mess. I mean, there's these stands everywhere. There's just pop shit everywhere. There's t-shirts. There's, there's like albums now. I don't know. There's just the most random stuff ever. Board games, every Monopoly game ever. There's these like giant bins full of games. It's just this mess. It's just this awful cluttered mess. Sometimes like I try to like get around to get to the register. Anyway, it used to not be that way. It used to be this nice open, a uh, little bit lower lighting than a lot of the other game stops. So it's got like that welcoming feel to it. It was just nice. The employees were nice. They got to know me. They weren't just trying to sell me shit. They did of course do the GPG order all that nonsense because they had to but they weren't like so crazy like during the time when we used to have to hand up those pre-order sheets they wouldn't confront you as you walked in asking what you what the hell you want and why you're there they would just kind of go what's up how you doing man do you need help and i'm like no nah, i'm good just kind of killing time like oh cool let me know if you need help and then they'd go off and do whatever they're doing 
They don't follow you around the store. And they would, they used to, I feel like, talk to you more. Now, I don't go out of my way to, you know, try to chit chat with the people that work there unless, of course, I know them already. But I used to a little bit. I used to be a bit more sociable. And I would be like, hey, what do you know about this game coming out? And they just, I feel like they know less. And I have an episode that I want to do in the future about unknowledgeable staff. I know some people were asking about that and my thoughts on it and what it was like working with those people. I definitely want to do a video on that because I have a lot to say. But it feels like there's a lot more of those people. Especially recently when I was just talking about just kind of in passing in the middle of a trade-in or transaction or whatever it was. I think it was canceling a pre-order. I was just talking about some like new game announcement. They didn't even know what I was talking about. I'm like, dude, you work at GameStop. You need to know these things. Like, I get it's retail, and, like, you shouldn't be forced to do homework to do your job, but you kind of do when you work at GameStop. You're going to have people asking you questions. You have the ability to guide people towards playing the best games. What if this is a new gamer coming in, and you don't know jack shit, so you just kind of, you know, oh, well, you just play the new Call of Duty game. You just kind of suggest something that everybody else is playing instead of maybe something more of a hidden gem or something you know will help them on their path to becoming a gamer something that will help them maybe make this a new hobby or something new that they're going to enjoy instead of just throwing them at the most recent shooter and to me that was really important when i worked there i wanted to know every single thing i could Unfortunately, that did backfire sometimes. Like, I talked about the whole Destiny thing and how I feel like I lied to people, even though I was only giving the information that I was given by internal communications, by press releases by the company, by videos that they've shown and they talked about. And most of the time, that didn't backfire, and I could instead inform the customer. Well, this game's really good. That's why I would check out games all the time. So even though I feel like it's a bad thing that they can, in fact, check out games, I also think it's a good thing. Now, how should they check out games? As a customer, I don't think they should be able to check out the brand new games that just came out. As an employee, I still feel like that wasn't completely the right thing to do, but at the same time, I knew that as a company, we had to gut a certain amount of copies anyway for promotions and stuff like that, so I would just check out a gutted copy. And I would never steal the codes in them. However, used games are fair game. If they're a used game, and they're trading it in, and there are codes in it, you bet your ass I took those codes. I, have, I used to have a stack like this thick of codes just for random games. I'm like, I don't even know what games I'm going to have in the future, but I'm just going to enter them all into the system. So at one point, if I buy that game, I'll get a bunch of extra shit. That's why I started Kingdoms of Amalur with like the Mass Effect armor or whatever. Because they didn't use the code. Free game if it's a used game. When you're buying a used game, you can expect there's either no code or it's not going to work. So that was free game. And I, I picked up a lot of the, the codes for the free Gears of War 1. And I just kind of passed them out. Or I actually, I kept a big stack for customers. So when they were buying, like, or wanting to pre-order one of the new Gears of War games or whatever, I could be like, oh, well, here's a code for the first one. And they could go off and re-download it and play it again. So, I don't know. It was just interesting having these different thoughts during these different stages of employment of GameStop. And kind of getting older you, you have a different look of things as well, besides, you know, just the employment of working there. But definitely working there changes it a lot. And like I said, I used to spend time there, but... And while working there, I still would spend time there, but it was only at the Game Stops where I knew the people that were working. And it was very little. I started doing it a lot, lot less because I freaking worked there. Um, when I was a seasonal, I probably hung out there more... Uh, or about the same as before my employment, just because seasonal employees, you don't really get that many hours. But after working almost full-time, 
especially over the years, the time that I spent in that store grew less and less and less. And then I learned about the Gamers Club Unlocked. I pretty much didn't buy anything there anymore. I was not buying new games, used games. I really wasn't buying much of anymore. I bought the occasional used game, like the older ones, because uh, they were phasing them out, like GameCube, stuff like that. And also, after working there, once I quit, uh, I don't know. I just... I just want to get in and get out. I mean, I spent years of my life in a GameStop and that was probably like thousands of hours spent in a GameStop. In a GameStop that I'll never be able to spend time in again because it just doesn't exist and it will never exist again. It was the perfect storm of GameStop. I know that sounds bad, but it was like the three bears story goldilocks and the three bears it was like the the perfect porridge bed thing i don't remember what the third thing was but it was perfect it was the perfect GameStop. i mean it's still like i've said in videos on the all these videos it still had its problems most of were from were corporate most of them were from a manager but the store itself and most of the people i worked with were great I made a lot of friends. I had a lot of interesting experiences in that store, made a lot of memories, and I don't know. There was no other store like it. So working, I think, at that store in particular, sure, I hate GameStop, but I feel like I would hate it a lot more if I'd worked at any other location because I had experienced so many other locations. I know this is nothing to do with me being a customer there anymore, but I guess it does a little bit. I'd probably stay far away from GameStops even more if I hadn't worked at a GameStop that allowed me to turn it down, had a insane, it had like a fan base. It was really weird. People would skip other GameStops and go out of their way to come to ours. I mean, they didn't even live nearby. It was crazy. Um, so it was just kind of the customer base that it had, the um, most of the employees it had, the lighting, the demos, the way it was kind of laid out. It was interesting. And also because no other GameStops like that GameStop, I just want to get in and get out. They're all such a mess now. I don't know if mine would have been a mess. I saw... Before it shut down, it was starting to become a little bit more of a mess, especially when it had the phones and all those accessories, and we started to get a little bit of the toys in. It wasn't nearly as bad as it is now, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking back with nostalgia goggles. It was my first real pretty much full-time job. I don't know. Like I said, still lots of problems with it. And to answer those people that asked if I would ever work there again, or just jokingly said I should get a part-time job there just to get more stories, that will never happen. Ever. Like I said, there was only that one store that I'd want to work at. And it doesn't exist anymore. Those people have moved on. Those memories will not happen again. It's just all gone. And just like everything else, you got to move on with life, move forward. And I'm also, I'm really glad it shut down because I was kind of in a place where I was just kind of accepting, like, sure. I was paid garbage there. The pay there is terrible. I was paid horribly, but because of the people I worked with, because of all those things about the store and how I had friends constantly visiting and the customer base really wasn't that bad compared to other ones. I mean, it still wasn't great, but I kind of settled for a couple of years when I could have and should have probably sought other employment to get paid more. But they did work with my school schedule. They did work with lots of different things. When I 
had a really bad experience happen in my life, they let me go home early and they really did care. You know, they, they would talk to me about it and they would, they would ask you about your day and like actually mean it. I mean, those, those people were your friends. So there will never be that store again. So I'll definitely never work for GameStop again. I mean, I don't think they would even hire me <laughs> after all these videos. Are you kidding me? Seriously? No. And plus I can't handle retail anymore. I'm, I'm so happy with, with my job that you have to have like a, a key card to get in like the general public just can't get in and that's just such a wonderful feeling I know when I was working at Walmart I was dreaming of a job like that you couldn't just have people walk up to you and just start bitching I mean that's what I was dreaming about when I was working there just a like any amount of stress that I feel at this job or any amount of stress that I see my coworkers having I'm like man you don't you don't know. It's so much. It could be so much worse. You could be working at Walmart. You could be working in retail. And I, I don't wish retail on, I don't want to say anyone, but most people. If you work in retail right now, stay strong. Most For most of you, it'll be temporary. For those of you who it isn't, find somewhere who who treats you right. And when I worked at that GameStop, most of the people that worked there did. And most of the customers did. So it was a tolerable place to work, unlike Walmart, which was just a living hell. And if I had to work there any longer, I would have sought new employment. And if you're unhappy in your current job, and you can, you do have the flexibility to find a new one, do it. Seriously. Look for another place to work. Don't just settle for where you're at. Even if it's just okay and you feel like you could be making more money and you could get, you know, a, a better position somewhere else and you know that you should be a manager and you have the experience and you have the confidence to do it, break out of that bubble. Break out of that comfortable area. It's something I need to do in my own life. And I feel like this YouTube channel was kind of Really, YouTube in general has been a step towards that direction. To being, being uncomfortable is a good thing in life. I'm just kind of going off right now. You guys can stop watching if you want. This is just kind of advice if you if you want it. Take it or leave it. It's I've I've heard people say this, and I really didn't understand it. But until recently, until I thought back to my life as I've looked back at my thing my memories and my experiences and things like that being uncomfortable is a good thing going out and putting yourself out there whether it's job interviews or you're single and you're trying to find somebody putting yourself out there being uncomfortable like is a good thing it means you're growing as a person it means you're going to make your life better because if you stay in a comfortable position like I did at GameStop, and I, I don't know how much longer I would have worked there if I hadn't snapped out of it after that store closed. Because I sure as hell was not going to keep working at Walmart. That was not a comfortable area. I wasn't going to settle for that. But I, I don't know. I, I kind of am scared to think about how long I might have settled for GameStop. I was just so used to that, that horrible culture of you better keep doing better like just like companies nowadays for the games industry that's why ga the games industry is so shitty because well every company is kind of like this but they make a profit and they have to keep beating that every single year and that's what it was like as an employee you're like your own personal company you get those numbers and you have to beat them over and over and over and over and it wasn't quite as bad as a company because it would have been kind of unmanageable at a certain point but they definitely expect you to keep doing better without rewarding you in any way. And I kept getting stunted in my, my positional growth at GameStop. My income was not moving up as fast as it should have. Yes, some of them were my fault. But a lot of them was the corporate culture and the people I was working with were holding me down and keeping me back. Yes, I was outspoken when I probably shouldn't have been, but I've always been an outspoken person. I speak my mind. That's what this whole channel is about. 
So get yourself in an uncomfortable place if you are in that that position right now where you're just kind of settled. Because don't settle, you know? Just keep fighting and keep moving forward. Keep making your life better. That's that's my thoughts, at least. I don't know. I kind of went off the rails there a little bit. This is a bit longer episode than usual. Like I said, take that advice or leave it. Maybe I was just rambling nonsensically, but... That's that's what I've been thinking about a lot lately is making yourself uncomfortable and just how healthy that is. It's a good thing. I mean, there are definitely some things you shouldn't like. I'm not encouraging you to go out and skydive. I mean, that's insane. In my opinion, skydiving is insane. What am I doing? What am I talking about? Forgot about that drink. I knew I would. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you liked it. That's what the likes button for, I guess. Subscribe for more content. Comment down below if you've had the same experience at other places of employment. I mean, I could do a whole episode about Walmart for sure. Because that drastically changed how I feel about that store. And let me know about any ideas of future GameStop videos you want me to do. I Like I said, I'm running low. I have been looking at the comments every single time, combing through them, trying to find ideas trying to bring up thoughts and memories of back when I worked there. And I'm coming up with some new ideas, but it definitely helps when you guys go, well, you haven't talked about this yet. I'm like, oh shit, that's important. How could I not have forgotten? You know, how could I have forgotten that? Thank you. So, and if you want to be acknowledged, let me know in the comment. And I'll say your username. But most of the time, I'm going to keep you anonymous unless you say otherwise. Because I don't want to, like, draw any unwanted attention to somebody and have them get pissed off. So, all that said and done. Like I said, seriously, even if you're in a miserable environment right now, know that you can always change it for the better. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Seriously. Have a fantastic day. See you guys. I feel like I rambled a little bit there. Hopefully I got my point across. Should have drank a little bit more. Helps sharpen the senses. I know that doesn't make any sense, but whenever I'm a little bit buzzed, it really helps me focus what I'm trying to talk about. I don't say, uh, um, uh, as much because I have a lot more confidence in what I'm saying. Maybe I do I don't know. That's my take on that. By the way, this is delicious. If you can drink, I highly recommend it. Catch fire, super cheap. I don't know about fireball as much. Fireball kind of tastes chemically to me, to me. This tastes a lot more like actual cinnamon. I don't know if that's because they use real cinnamon. Made with natural cinnamon. Well, they answered my own question. Made with, made with natural cinnamon. So, I don't think fireball says that. Fireball probably says made with cancer. I don't know. <laughs>